Hey DIYers, I'm Alicia. And I'm Allie from Whimsy Box. Welcome to DIY 5, where we count down five of our favorite DIY projects from the week, tell you what's going on around here, and talk about other silly stuff. Cool. Ready? I'm ready. Well, not every DIY project requires a Martha Stewart or a Whimsy Box sized craft closet, Thank as you. these cardboard crowns from Momtastic prove. Perfect for a party or just an afternoon dress up session. Uh, Brittany from Paper and Stitch whipped these up using an old cereal box yeah, yeah. and then dressed them up using decorative paper, though you could use contact paper, old wrapping paper scraps, any paints you have on hand, um, or any supplies. I think they're super cute and fun. And really, not even just for kids. I'm thinking maybe Halloween, like a little yeah crown. I like the little, like the, the scaled down version of like little hats and things like that. Yeah, on a headband or something. Totally, they're it's really, really fun. Cute. Well, Gloria from the blog Little White Whale uh, took a trio of inexpensive wooden boxes, like a cigar box, and transformed them kawaii style. I may not be pronouncing that right, but... What's um, kawaii? Is it Hawaii? Kawaii is... I learned this today. It's actually like a genre, like a Japanese kind of um, genre of just like cute. So, you know, like... The big eyes and the, it's just anything cute or adorable. Okay. We'll have to look into it some more. But yes, it's I'm a, gonna look it up. yeah, it seems to be kind of a trend now. And it's, it is cute and adorable. So she transformed these boxes and made them into faces. Um, and they're perfect for craft storage. So you could always create a box for like each of your family members. With a little face with on it. With a little that sort face, of and they could store their craft supplies or their whatever. And um, yeah, they're just they're adorable. Cute. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh oh, I goofed it up again. Oh, I was no. gonna double check and I didn't double check. Oh well. Cut out that part. Everybody's fine. Nicole from the Felted Fox has been killing me all summer with adorable fashion DIYs. No exaggeration. But this one is my favorite, favorite, favorite. It is a wrap crop top um, <laughs> that looks, don't look at me like I'm about to wear, <laughs> that looks straight out of a magazine. And it doesn't hurt that she is model gorgeous. She is. And the, the pictures are beautiful. The whole thing is awesome. But I can't believe this. She said it's the first piece she's made on her own without a pattern. And she totally nailed it. So I say, get thee to Project Runway, girl. <laughs> Somebody call Tim Gunn because this is so awesome. And on top of that, it's upcycled from an old men's shirt. It's really cute. And it's you certainly. can tie it a couple different ways and it looks so awesome and amazing. And Elisa could probably wear it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like to wear strapless things, so. This is strapless. It's not? No, it's a crop. Oh, yeah. It's not a crop here. It's crop like sort of like on your belly. Oh, so it has sleeves. It has sleeves. It has oh, little sleeves. And then you can tie it in the front or in the back. Or there was another style too. There was like three ways. Adorable, so cute, um, and it fits her perfectly. So that and that's hard to do, and long it's and lean. Extra hard to do um, with just like an old men's shirt. You know, there's no stretch to that fabric. That's like, true. It has to actually like fit properly. So it's amazing, clever. Well, where are we? Adventures in Dressmaking created this uh, Delicates travel bag with the help of her silhouette and her sewing machine. So a simple zippered pouch, it's separated into two compartments, and she added some cute decals using transfer. Whose phone is that? I left it right here because I'm waiting for Comcast to call. Yeah. I bet there are a lot of people out there waiting this for Comcast. This is Comcast. Comcast. Yeah, I know. This is Alicia. One to five today. Nice. They said eight to 12 <gasps> yesterday, and they did not come. However, they've been really nice on the phone, so I feel a little torn. Like, yeah. but we need the internet. We kind of do. We are borrowing internet from our upstairs neighbors who are really nice, but like, it only works on some computers and it's a whole debacle, so. Yeah, so we've got people like Patrick's across the street, yeah, and Michelle's totally. home using the internet, and we're just kind of getting by, but soon. Soon we'll if anybody be all sees a guy up. that looks remotely like he works for Comcast, anywhere in the vicinity, tackle we even him. put a little, tackle our little note on the outside door that's like, we are here. Yeah. Come the in. Note, there was a note in our account apparently that said um, that yesterday they tried to stop by <clears throat> and uh, it was a grocery store that was under construction, so they left. That's not true. That is not true. <laughs> and for the record, I sit five feet, seven feet from the front door, so it's even like. Did you step inside? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yay, internet. 
Well, screaming friendly Comcast, come on over. So I was talking about these delicate travel bags. Yes. <laughs> So anyway, she made these little zippered pouches that have two compartments. She added some cute decals using transfer material um, uh, from the silhouette that was cut out, right? Yep. Just iron on. Um, so when you're traveling, you know which garments are to be washed and which one are to be worn. It's way classier than the smell test. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I'm like, Elisa just well, made a face. Which one? <laughs> well, now when you're traveling, you know. And you can keep them separate, I guess. So TSA doesn't open them up and see her. I had my bag inspected by TSA, which I take pride in like not screwing up the travel process. Right. So anytime I get like the random whatever, I'm just like, oh, I'm not an idiot, I swear. But this, um, in this case it was, I was in New Jersey last weekend visiting my parents. Hi guys. And uh, my mom gave me one of my favorite candles. And so I put it in my suitcase to come back home and, um, Anyway, my bag got flagged, and I could see on the screen there was like a they had put a box around uh, the candle because it has a wick. And yeah, I thought you were gonna. Yeah, light exactly, it off. exactly. Oh, um, but fortunately, it was like right on top because it's so embarrassing, right? When they have to like go mm -hmm. through your stuff, especially on the way back when like the packing job is subpar and, and you're like I'm headed home, dirty, and yeah. But fortunately, it was like right on top, so we opened it up, and I was like, candle, and he tested it for explosive residue, <laughs> and it passed. And we were on our way. One time I had a whole bunch of candles though. My parents used to live by a candle factory and they were like, is your suitcase full of candles? And I was like, yes, yes it, it is. is. And they were like, okay, lady. <laughs> I had an experience one time I was going to one of my best friend's weddings. I had made her, it was so cute. I had made a picnic basket. Well, I didn't make the picnic basket. I put all the things in the picnic basket. I had all these framed pictures that I had made for her and they were all wrapped up really cute right and they unwrapped they them all. warn you about that I know but I was like seriously that and the snow globes those snow globes people. Yeah. oh I was so like you know you get it and you kind of think to yourself well that was kind of stupid on your part but at the same time I but you cross your fingers and hope that it just doesn't happen yeah. totally oh well around the holidays oh well oh travel <laughs> Uh, were you done with this? Yeah, we're, we're done. <laughs> okay, let's see. I have one more project, but I goofed up the order, so let me find it. Um, bloop, bloop, bloop. No, you went too far. No, no, yep. No, wait, it's coming. It'll be here. I'm sure. I wrote it. <gasps> Maybe no. it's under here. Maybe that's what happened. No. Oh, da -da -da. oh yeah, this is a good one. So I know last week we were talking about back to school. Yeah, and then and I think promised. I promised to not talk about back to school. No, you don't but have this to, weekend, you don't like have I said, I was at my parents' house in New Jersey, and my sister was there. Hey, Net, and um, she works for a school district, and she was telling me they go back in two weeks. Ugh. So apparently, this is not crazy like retailers. This is full on actually time to like do back to school stuff Damn. but she said the reason was they wanted to be able to finish the first semester before the Christmas holiday and before the way it was like when you started in September you would have to come back and you'd finish the second quarter like there'd be like two or three weeks left after okay. the Christmas break and it was like a bummer for teachers and I guess students too yeah because then you go home you're on Christmas break you lose focus you forget everything you learned then you have to come back and like catch up on all yeah. that stuff okay I get so it. it makes a lot of sense and they get out earlier um, oh poor kids but anyway it's it's happening it is that time so that's the reason and the thing I learned so I decided on that note to break my promise <laughs> so if you're on that schedule um, you should and you're preparing for back to school you should check out these really cool fabric covered notebooks from skip to my loo um, she teaches you how to make your own book cloth which is like the cloth used when binding books. Yeah. Um, the book cloth is, well, one, it's kind of expensive, and two, it's available in like limited colors and patterns. But if you could make your own, then you could have all these cool patterns on like the ones she used, which are really gorgeous, and use it to decorate any book or notebook. Cool. As always, you can find the links to each of these projects and tons and tons of others in the show notes below. I have a joke in my head, but it's not gonna come out right. But there's so many fruit projects. I want to like do something like fruit by the foot. <laughs> like really? Like we've got fruit, no, we've, we've oh. got fruit by the foot. Would anybody even get that? 
Well, do they even still sell fruit by the foot? I think so. There's the little zebra guy, right? No. That's Fruit Stripes Gum. Okay, sorry. Yikes, yeah, Stripes, Fruit Stripes Gum. This weekend we were playing um, that game, that Ellen app, where you uh, flip the phone or the iPad on your head or whatever, yeah. and I bought the 90s one. Nice. And it was totally killing it. Still had my phone on, sorry. <laughs> okay, what about our featured influencer? Our featured influencer this week <laughs> I had some serious technical difficulties. I don't even. I don't even. Know I can tell see. you about her from memory. She's pretty awesome. It's Mandy from Vintage Revivals. Hey, Mandy. <laughs> hold up. Hold up. So this week's featured influencer is Mandy from the blog Vintage Revivals. Hey, Mandy. I love Mandy because she doesn't take herself too serious. She's I love Mandy because she makes awesome stuff. Yeah, so she's a fun-loving thrifter, um, and she believes in all-or-nothing design overhauls. Like she goes big. Yeah. Um, she preaches on her blog that your home should look like you and no one else, which I like, and that everybody has an inner design fairy that's just waiting to bust out. I like that. Well, Mandy's inner design fairy must be a super fae because the force is strong with this one. What is a fae? A fae is a fairy. You don't watch True Blood? Mm -mm. Ugh. Anyway, okay, so a fae is a fairy, or maybe it's like a group of fairies. It's a fairy. It's a fairy. So check out Mandy's gorgeous room reveals and uh, get ready to be inspired by her fearless DIY decorating prowess. She is um, super funny, but she's also no joke. She knows what she's doing. And thanks, Mandy, for inspiring us. Awesome. Uh, let's see, what else? What fruit by the foot? is going on? Fruit by the foot. I know, we were just talking. So it is so dreary here today. I'm looking out the windows. It is like rain, 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 flash flood warning, rain yeah. happening. It's coming and down. it's Wednesday. We always shoot DIY 5 on Wednesdays, which is also um, one of the farmer's market days here. So we were just debating if it was going to be open. Like, but we're thinking yes. I'm thinking yes. And it doesn't rain here that much. It doesn't. So it's sort of rare when it's this rainy. Yeah. Yeah. And we were saying like, oh, like we gotta get to the farmer's market because there's a couple things that like you have to buy when they're in season. Peaches! Perfect. That's what we were talking about. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Another thing that I'm like, I won't buy tomatoes like in the off season. They're just weird at the grocery store. None of the they're orangey like, like. They're just like a, like, I don't know. A, poor version of what a tomato should be. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the farmer's market and peaches. So Patrick, um, his wife's coming into town and they're headed to Palisade, which is known for their peaches. And I'm super jealous. Ooh, maybe it'll bring a ton back. If we yeah. Ask. Cause like this time of year, you have to like eat peaches like over the sink. Cause it'll be like dripping off your elbows and they're so good. That's the best. Tastes like sunshine. I've been eating a lot of bananas lately. It's not that exciting, but it turns out Radish the dog likes bananas, so she will sit patiently and then I can give her the last bite because the last bite of the banana is like the worst part anyway. <laughs> so that's sort of nice. A little treat for Radish. And strawberries. Yes. I don't know. I love when it's just in season and I'm already like freaking out about the end of all the... Yeah. Good. My parents produce. have huge... Um, raspberry bushes um, mm -hmm. in their yard. And it's actually a chore. They're like, you gotta go pick the raspberries because you don't want the birds to get them. But then they just stick them in the freezer and they have raspberries frozen all year long. And it's really awesome. There's a person I'm friends with on Facebook and she has some raspberry bushes. And she said every time she goes out to pick them, she thinks these are actually underpriced at the supermarket because it's like a lot of work yeah. for each individual berry. Yeah, and it's hard. I mean, they're, you know, brambles and all of that, and you kind of have to get in there and kind of fight your way to the berries. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've seen a ton of beautiful um, DIY, like recipes, popsicles, like all of these fruit-inspired um, projects online. Yeah, popsicle madness. Yeah, popsicles, sherbet. Mm, I like sherbet. Yeah, yummy. But like, just all the fresh fruits and vegetables this time of year, it's really nice. And it makes you appreciate, like you said, what it takes to actually like grow them and pick them and cook them and all of that, so. We usually grow a couple things, but this year I planted mint, which is 
pretty easy to grow. Yeah, you can't <laughs> kill that. Oh, yes, you can. Oh. <laughs> and basil. And they both died. No. Turns out you should water them. Yeah, you gotta do that. Yeah. Well, that's the thing living in such a dry climate. Like, it takes a lot to grow this food. Like, it takes a wall of water to grow tomatoes. Totally. So, yeah, you kind of have to be on top of that. I actually created, I used to have a big garden in my backyard. Um, and we've moved since, but I created this like irrigation system. It was kind of elaborate. Really? Yeah. yeah. We live um, in a house, but it's a rental, and somebody had put in some sort of irrigation system for the yard at some point, but then someone else, who will not be named, had modified it to try to make it do more, and now it does nothing. Oh. So our front yard is mulch. I have actually... We're, we're the neighbors that you love. <laughs> Actually, in a climate like this, it doesn't make sense to have grass. It's true. So, but I've been, I've done that before where I've been like, oh, the sprinklers come on every afternoon. I'll just turn the sprinkler so it'll shoot off onto my oh, garden. Oh, well, that way. Perfect. But who knows what it's doing to the rest of the <laughs> Okay. Well, let's see. That's it. Yeah. I think we'll see you back here in August, but in the meantime, don't forget to share your awesome projects with us. You can upload them at whimsybox.com or you can share them with us on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, whatever your social network of choice is. Just use hashtag whimsybox. Thanks, guys. See ya. I only goofed that one up like 17 times. <laughs>